Good morning. We begin NASA television coverage of mission STS-72 here at the John F. Kennedy Space Center in Florida. We're just hours away from the 74th Space Shuttle launch and the 10th flight of the Orbiter Endeavour with a crew of six astronauts. Liftoff is planned at 4.18 a.m. Eastern Time, the opening of a 49-minute launch window. This is Shuttle Launch Control, T-minus three hours in holding. Final inspection team is on the uh, mobile launcher platform, continuing their inspections of the vehicle. The team has about eight members representing NASA and the contractors, and uh, Greg Katnick of the KS of Kennedy Space Center is leading the team. The team carries a variety of instruments. One is a portable infrared scanner to measure temperatures on the cryogenic surfaces of the tank, engines, and orbiter. We also measure temperatures of the solid rocket booster cases and segment joints. And here we have the crew uh, sitting down at the traditional uh, table the uh, decorated cake bearing their STS-72 insignia. We have mission specialist Koichi Wakata flying for the first time aboard the shuttle. Koichi is an astronaut from NASDA, uh, born in Japan. And Dr. Daniel Berry flying for the first time aboard the shuttle this morning. Berry will be one of the EVA specialists. And pilot Brent Jett also flying aboard the shuttle the first time. He'll be uh, monitoring, using the RMS for the uh, flight crew while they're performing EVAs. Here we have Commander Brian Duffy flying for the third time aboard the shuttle today. Uh, Duffy, the most experienced in the uh, shuttle for the whole crew. Mission Specialist Leroy Chow, he's making his second flight today aboard the shuttle. He will be involved in two of the spacewalks. And uh, serving as flight engineer, Winston Scott, uh, flying for the first time aboard the shuttle today. Again, the crew's been awake since about 7 p.m., and uh, they're getting uh, right on their schedule that they'll be following during the nine-day mission for Mission STS-72. The final inspection team is uh, continuing their assessment. And we do have the uh, astronauts uh, at the crew quarters getting into their launch and entry suits. We've got Commander Brian Duffy. He's making his uh, third flight into space today. As commander, he's got uh, overall responsibility of the flight. He's the most experienced space flyer on this mission. And of course, during the uh, re-entry, he will take control just minutes before touchdown and will be responsible for, uh, for all of the systems on board the vehicle during the uh, rendezvous maneuvers. And shuttle rookie Brent Jett is making his first flight. He will be assisting Duffy at the flight controls, including the two rendezvous operations. Jet will also operate the robot arm during the two spacewalks that are planned. And NASDA astronaut and mission specialist uh, Koichi Wakata flying on the space shuttle for the first time. Wakata will be using the robot arm during the mission to retrieve the Japanese space flyer unit satellite and we'll also use the arm to deploy and retrieve the OST scientific uh, flyer. 
across the room, uh, flight engineer Winston Scott and uh, mission specialist Leroy Chow. Chow making his second flight aboard the shuttle, uh, ready to go this morning. And uh, Chow will be involved in both of the spacewalks planned for the mission. Also, he is the prime operator for the commercial protein crystal birth experiment. Uh, rookie shuttle astronaut Winston Scott flying for the first time and he serves as the flight engineer for this mission. In that capacity, uh, he will be uh, responsible for the this space flyer unit systems, the OST flyer systems. We'll be operating several of the secondary experiments. And we have mission specialist, Dr. Dan Barry. He's saying he's ready to go for launch today. He's also uh, flying for the first time aboard the shuttle. He will be involved in the first spacewalk of this mission. Crew will be departing for launch pad 39B in about uh, 20, 30 minutes. And uh, it's about a 30-minute ride out to the launch pad. Well, again, things look good for launch as far as weather's concerned here at KSC. And uh, no ice concerns with the external tank or anywhere on the vehicle at all. The ice team reported that uh, things look very good. Here we have the astronauts for mission STS-72 coming out of their crew quarters at the uh, operations and checkout building. They'll be uh, getting into an elevator where they'll ride down to the first floor. Am I out? Crew of six, again, has been training uh, for the better part of the year. They've uh, spent most of their time uh, training for this particular flight. Some uh, employees wishing them well. We have the team led by Commander Brian Duffy. in the astronaut van to the launch pad. It's about a 30-minute uh, ride to pad 39B. The astro van is escorted by KSC security. And the astro van is off. This is shuttle launch control. We've got the STS-72 flight crew now at the 195-foot level at the launch pad.
Brian Duffy is uh, commander of the flight, and he is, uh, has overall responsibility for the mission. Duffy is a colonel in the Air Force. He's the most experienced space flyer on the mission, having flown twice before as pilot of STS-45 in 1992 and STS-57 in 1993. Duffy is a native of Boston, Massachusetts. He was director of the F-15 test flights at Eglin Air Force Base in Florida before being selected as an astronaut candidate in NASA, by NASA in 1985. And mission specialist uh, Dr. Dan Barry now getting ready to take his assigned seat. Uh, he will be seated down in the uh, mid-deck for ascent. Uh, Barry calls South Hadley, Massachusetts, his hometown. Uh, and he earned five degrees after high school, including a doctorate in electrical engineering computer science from Princeton University and a doctorate in medicine from the University of Miami. And Commander Duffy has nicknamed him Dr. Dr. Dan. Mission Specialist Koichi Wakata is now getting the rest of his gear on, getting ready for his first flight aboard the space shuttle. Wakata is uh, from the Japanese Space Agency and uh, will be operating the remote, remote manipulator system robotic arm. He's responsible for grappling the satellites uh, and for berthing them in the pay orbiter's payload bay.
T-minus five minutes and counting. T-minus five minutes and counting. TLT, OTC, perform ATU start. Good luck. CDR, OTC, reconfigure heaters. Try not to work. A profile test of the orbiter's aero surfaces has started. The orbiter flight control surfaces are being moved through a pre-programmed pattern to verify they are ready for launch. The main engines are being gimbaled and positioned for launch. All systems are go at this time, just a few minutes away from the 10th voyage of Endeavour with a crew of six on the first shuttle flight of the year. T-minus three minutes and counting. GLS is go for ET, LO2, pressurization. External tank is now being pressurized for flight. The gaseous oxygen vent hood at the very top of the tank will be moved away, retracted back to the launch position in the next few seconds. Caution and warning memory, verify no unexpected errors. OTC, caution and warning, it's clear and unexpected errors. Copy. Endeavor, OTC, close and lock your visors, initiate O2 flow, have a smooth ride and a safe landing. All right, thanks, OTC, and let's get 96 off to a great start. GLS is go for EP, LH2, pressurization. At the T-minus 31 second point, Endeavour's onboard computers will have control of vehicle functions. In the next few seconds, 25. thousands of gallons of water will be dumped onto the launch platform to help suppress the sound and shock of the 7 million pounds of thrust produced by the shuttle. T minus 15 seconds. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. We have a go for engine start. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 
Booster ignition and liftoff of Endeavour in pursuit of a Japanese satellite. Houston, now controlling. Well, program, Houston. Roger, roll, Endeavour. The roll maneuver is uh, complete aboard the orbiter Endeavour. The orbiter is now in a head down position on course for 28 and a half degrees, 250 nautical mile orbit. In pursuit of the space flyer unit for rendezvous and capture on Saturday morning. Endeavour's engines have now throttled down as the orbiter prepares to pass through the area of maximum dynamic pressure on the vehicle. Three main engines now throttling back up. Endeavour Houston, go with throttling. Endeavour's three liquid-fueled engines are now back at full throttle. The orbiter is now downrange from the Kennedy Space Center of 10 nautical miles. The orbiter is traveling 2,600 feet per second, or about 1,700 miles per hour. The altitude is passing through 90,000 feet. The three hydraulic systems are in excellent shape as are the fuel cells. The main engines are still performing at full throttle. Approaching two minutes into the flight, standing by for burnout and separation of the twin solid rocket boosters. SRB separation is confirmed. Time two minutes and twenty seconds into the flight. Every performance nominal. Quadra nominal. Performance thus far in the uh, launch phase has been as expected. Endeavour is now at an altitude of two hundred and ten thousand feet. Downrange from the launch site, forty-five nautical miles. Now traveling five thousand feet per second, or about three thousand four hundred miles per hour.